All right, folks. Uh, yesterday was the Game Awards, and there's a whole lot we could talk about. We did a four-hour live stream, most of it being the event, a little bit of a pre-show. Uh, we did some reactions at the time, and there's actually quite a bit of news we could talk about today. After all, the MPD report came out today, uh, and we learned some really interesting things. PlayStation 5 had the best launch uh, in terms of unit sales and dollar sales in the history of home consoles, and Nintendo Switch is still on top. Of course, we knew that yesterday because Nintendo announced that Nintendo Switch is still on top in terms of unit sales. It sold the most amount of units in November. So, cool. Let me talk about that, how wrong I was about my predictions. It's okay. But what I want to actually focus on is an aspect that needs to get better. An aspect I expected, but an aspect of covering these events that needs to change. And I don't know how it can change. I just know that it needs to. So, the Game Awards, whether you liked it or hated it, was massively advertised uh, across the internet, right? Not just the official streams, which I'm sure did record numbers. I think Jeff Keighley said the official streams did record numbers. Uh, there was also a record number of watchers through co-streams. And for those who don't know, co-streams are basically people like me. Uh, that are streaming the event to my audience uh, with my live reactions. It's it's live reactions, right? We 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 do this all the time. We do it for E3. Uh, we do it for Nintendo Directs. We do it for State of Plays. All that jazz. You know, we, we we try to do it across all the major events in the industry. And it's because it's it's interesting to see uh, when you don't know what's going to happen, how that your favorite content creator, live streamer, or whatever is going to react. Plus, you get to come together as a smaller community instead of jamming, you know, hundreds of thousands and, you know, millions of people into one stream and one chat you, where you don't know anyone. You can come together in a community and also talk to other people in that community uh, and react kind of together in the chat. So it's a really nice community-driven event that also benefits, obviously, the original uh, event. So, it's, it's common for these streams to happen. Now, there are some things that you just accept when you are streaming these events. Uh, like E3, if you stream Ubisoft's press conference, you know you're going to get a copyright strike and or copyright claims or both. This is primarily because of the game Just Dance 2021, 2022, 2023, etc. Just Dance is a game that uses a bunch of copyrighted music. It leads to copyrighted music being played during during the Ubisoft stream. And you just kind of know if you stream it, you're going to uh, have those issues and have to deal with them. Uh, and sometimes they crop up with other companies as well. Uh, and you get strikes. And this is really frustrating during E3 because if your channel gets striked on YouTube in particular, you literally can't stream for the rest of e3 uh and if you get a couple strikes you can't upload either so it, it's just it's really frustrating and really infuriating but it's also known and it's something we've been wanting as content creators to get better but the problem with the game awards is that jeff Keeley went out of his way to create a co-streaming program he went out of his way to advertise promote and get people like me to stream the event. He wanted all content creators, no matter what platform it was on, in particular he targeted Twitch and YouTube, uh, to stream or co-stream the event. They provided official assets for it. They provided um, artwork like my... Uh, uh, my, you know, starting soon splash screen was provided by them. Uh, my entire stream layout was provided by them. They provided uh, early access to some information. It was really cool, right? It was a really neat thing to do. It made people like me feel like we're part of the Game Awards too. And I think it helped make the community feel like we're all part of the Game Awards as well, even if you didn't like the awards. Okay, this isn't a, a, a criticism of whether or not you enjoyed the awards themselves or the show. But when you're doing that, you can't have things like this happen. This is my email last night. YouTube copyright claim was created for content in the Game Awards. Oh, for the Smash character. Wait, wait, that's that's my title. Okay, wait, wait. Oh, wait, it is over the, the, the potential Smash character, I think. What's it, what's it got here? Oh, right. Uh, it's not a copyright strike, but this video was uh, had a copyright claim. Okay. Uh, lay look, another copyright claim. Oh, this one gives you even more details. It tells you exactly what was claimed. Uh, here we go. The most wonderful time of the year. Copyright claimed. 
Uh, first incident, no choir, copyright claimed. Uh, copyright claimed by two people. Ad rev for, jeez. Uh, oh, look, copyright claim for portals to earth. Copyright claim for follow such unfollow by OFK live from the Game Awards. Huh. Okay. Uh, oh, look, more copyright claims that I didn't even open yet. Future Guardian. Uh, um, let's see here. Copyright claim. Uh, Rune Instrumental. So even Instrumentals were getting copyright claimed. Uh, it takes two. Obviously, that game and that entire song in that game was going to be copyright claimed. Uh, Mantra. These are 10 plus, and I have another email chain of copyright claims from the Game Awards. Now, who really cares, right? Who really cares about copyright claims? The video gets to stay live. Oh, no, I can't make ad revenue. Move on with your day. And that's fine. You know, we had people donate during the stream and all that. You get to keep all the super chats and that. But the problem with copyright claims is that any point from now to the end of my channel's life, a copyright claim can turn into a strike. I have had strikes from copyright claims that happened five E3s ago on this channel, before it was even Nintendo Prime. I've had a copyright strike from a stream or video that had copyrighted music from back then. Strikes are bad on YouTube, okay? On Twitch, if you have copyrighted music, you can not only get your stream deleted after the fact, and any clips from that stream deleted after the fact, you can lose your ability to stream. On YouTube, you can get a strike, which the first one gets rid of streaming. Second one limits your ability to upload content and blocks you for a bit. Third one, your channel's deleted. So, like, it's a very serious thing on these platforms. And my issue isn't that the copyright holders can't copyright claim music. The issues are that if you are going to have this massive major event, right, this huge event that you are actively trying to get people like me to cover and co-stream where you know there's copyrighted music you as a show showrunner need to ensure there is zero copyrighted music put into the event because you can't control youtube you can't control the copyright holders that are going to do whatever they can to get as much money as possible and you can't control you know twitch as well and the way their filters work what you can control is if there's music in your event that can be copyright claimed in the first place. You cannot have copyrighted music in an event like this when, when, and this isn't me criticizing E3 and Ubisoft, like, that's fine. They're not advertising people to co-stream. This is where Jeff Keighley reached out to my personal email and asked me if I would co-stream the event. If you are going to push for creators to co-stream, to co-stream the event, you can't then have an event that could potentially mass delete all the creators down the line. You can't do that. It's actively working against us. Now, you guys as a community don't have to care about this. It's not something you guys could just go watch the original stream. You don't have to watch co-streams. You know, it's whatever. But if you care about content creators, you should care like, this is my number one criticism of the Game Awards this year. It's not even about the show. It's that Jeff Keighley pushed this year, pushed huge for co-streaming, only for all of us to deal with copyright claims. All of us to potentially deal with strikes. And you know what makes this worse? In the United States, there is a bill currently being pressed where any infringement of copyright which would include copyright claims on YouTube and Twitch, and it's actually particularly targeting YouTube and Twitch, could be considered a felony in the United States. Now, I don't know if that bill is going to get passed. I think it's a long shot for that bill to really get passed because now you're you know, you're going after the American people, and I'm not so sure that uh, that's something that any senators would want to going to want to back, no matter how much money is thrown behind it. But it is a situation where there's a realistic chance sometime in you know in the next handful of years that a strike isn't what we're actually worried about we have to worry about being charged with felonies and going to jail because somebody else that pushed us to co-stream it allowed copyrighted music to be part of that stream affecting us this is something that has to change in the industry i could talk about how the greater youtube and twitch sphere and and, and music you know publishers need to uh change things but they're just taking advantage of the tools available and the laws that are out there we can't expect copyright holders to change their behavior uh 
as much as we want them to. You know, we, we begged Nintendo to change their behavior uh, with how with how they treated, you know, that, that charity fund, with how they, they treat the Smash community. We begged them, but ultimately, if they're within their legal rights, they're going to do what they can do. What you can control is if there's anything that needs to have this happen in the first place. Jeff Keighley is in express control of the entire Game Awards. The entire Game Awards. He, if he gets a trailer, like for It Takes Two, which clearly was going to use the, the music It Takes Two, which is copyrighted, right? He knows this. He's seen the trailer. He has to go back to you know, Yusuf and be like, hey, I understand this song perfectly fits and is probably even in the game. But for the purpose of the Game Awards and supporting content creators, we cannot allow this trailer to have a copyrighted song in it. You need to pick something out of the YouTube music library or out of some free library out there that isn't going to enable copyright claims. Just for the purpose of this trailer, you're free to release a, 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 an updated trailer with that song after the event if you would like. It's not that hard. It's not that hard to not have copyrighted music in this event. And it is on Jeff Keighley to make sure that doesn't happen if and only if he's going to push for co-streaming. And you know he's going to because Jeff Keighley is trying to reach as wide of an audience as possible, which means co-streaming is a massive benefit for the event. So this is just my public plea to let the fans know what's happening. I talked about it during the stream. I didn't recognize every instance I was going to get claimed, but there was a particular point where like it was like three consecutive trailers had three consecutive songs and music. And this includes songs that can appear in some of the ads in the show. Three consecutive trailers at one point had copyrighted music, and I'm like, oh boy. And, was, and then you have like people in the chat screaming, mute, mute. There was already five seconds played. At that point, muting is not going to change anything. Oh, just go back and re-edit. You know how hard it is to go back and edit out a small clip from a four-hour live stream? <laughs> like This isn't some short event, like a 15-minute Nintendo Direct. This is a long event. You know how long it takes? Oh, just delete the stream after. Well, then what the hell was the point of live reacting to a stream if people can't go back and watch your reactions if they weren't able to attend the event live? What the hell is the point? And deleting the stream after doesn't change the fact you got those strikes. They can still, or got those claims, they can still turn into strikes later. It, it's, I'm not going to blame YouTube. I'm not going to blame Twitch. I'm not going to blame the copyright holders. I'm literally, I'm blaming Jeff Keighley. I love you, Keighley, man. I've been following you for a long time. We all have to talk about how Nintendo is out of touch with how the internet works. You're out of touch with how this works for us streamers. Twitch has been cracking down on this stuff like crazy this year. YouTube's been cracking down for years. Jeff Keeley, do better. If you want co-streamers, do better. Now, this is where I throw my final disclaimer in. I knew this was going to happen. I didn't know because I knew what music was going to be used or what trailers were going to be shown. I didn't know that. But it happens every time. <laughs> The only time it doesn't happen is like a Nintendo Direct. But pretty much any other thing that you stream has copyrighted music in it. When it comes to these video game events. So I kind of expected it. But there's always that thing in the back of my mind where it's like, you know, they were really heavily promoting people like me do this. You realize you're promoting that people like me do something that could ruin, you know, if this was my career, could ruin my career could ruin my hobby, you can ruin my channel. So nothing we could do about it at this point. It's already come, it's already happened, it's already done. The claims aren't going to get rescinded. I guarantee that's not going to happen. Ubisoft tries to get claims rescinded uh, with theirs every single year, uh, and the most they usually can do is if it's a strike, they can get the company to reduce it from a strike, but they usually can't get the actual copyright claim rescinded. Uh, I want to see these events done better if you're going to lean on the creator community to help promote your events that's all that's all i'm saying i feel like there is a professional responsibility for jeff Keeley, in this case with the game awards to make sure the event is actually streamer friendly because right now there's going to be a point where streamers might start to ignore the game awards especially if laws get passed that turn this stuff into felonies we are being asked to cover something is like we're going to be asked to commit a crime because we know deep in our in our memory that hey 
every time we've covered this, we got copyright claim. Why should we change now? Not like why, like why cover it now when it's a felony? Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. We got plenty of positive gaming stuff to cover. Lots of stuff, you know, sales numbers and game awards, coolness. You know, there's some cool trailers that came out. Lots of cool things to talk about. But for now, I just needed to get this off my chest because it's just frustrating and I want it to be done better. And it's not going to be done better by ignoring it. All right, folks, I'll catch you in the next video.